Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Sophie Kamisi. Um, Sophie Kamisi is an immigrant from the Middle East who arrived in the United States at the age of 12 um, with the invaluable support of several nonprofit organizations. Uh, their assistance not only helped her family get on their feet, but also ignited a lifelong passion for nonprofits and advocacy, especially for immigrant rights. Uh, she began her career in financial services and consulting for social good organizations, where she noticed a common struggle among nonprofits, which of course is limited resources. And Sophie saw an opportunity to make a difference, which led her to join Bonterra. Um, here, she's dedicated to helping nonprofits find CRM solutions that automate manual tasks, allowing them to focus on their very important mission. Um, so with that, Sophie, I'm going to go ahead and pass it to you. Thank you. Awesome, Ashley. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone who has joined this webinar. I acknowledge that it is in the middle of the workday and sometimes it's hard to pull yourself away from work. So again, thank you so much for your time here. Uh, I'd like to move into the agenda slide today. And really today we're going to cover some of the essentials surrounding mobile messaging as well as why it's increasing in popularity. And then we're going to move into why an omni-channel approach is essential for communications. And if you don't know what an omni-channel is, that's totally okay. This is what I am here for. So we're going to be covering that as well. Um, from there, we're going to then explore how to actually get started with mobile messaging. And we're going to end with some tips and tricks to automating communications to help your organizations maximize your time while also increasing your fundraising efforts. And we'll end with some Q&A as well, because I'd love to hear from you all. Now, before we just get right on into it here, I am really curious to hear. Sometimes some organizations say yes, some say no. So Ashley has put a poll here up on the screen, and I'd love to hear from you all. Um, if you've used mobile messaging in the past to engage with your supporters, if you've used it for any kind of campaigns, et cetera. So I'll give us about 30 seconds here. And then Ashley, if you don't mind pulling those results and then giving us a little bit, uh, giving us kind of like the percentage of yes or no's there. Yeah, so it looks like as results are trickling in, most people pretty overwhelmingly um, have not used mobile messaging at their organization. Okay. It's not split 50-50 by any means, more like 75-25. <laughs> awesome. Well, okay, this is why we're on this webinar, right? So we can learn about wow. mobile messaging. We can understand uh, why it is it's so powerful, why it's growing in popularity, but I'm not just going to leave you out here to dry either. I'm going to show you how to be able to integrate it into your current communication tools so that you're prepared. If you want to make that next step into integrating it within your engagement toolbox, you know how to be able to do so. So with that being said, let's actually talk about why mobile messaging here um, is growing in effectiveness. Now, as we can see here, it is becoming more and more popular as we continue to find ways to increase our efficiency and then finding ways to do some additional fundraising. Now, with mobile messaging, read rates are hitting about 98% in two minutes of the text being sent out, and it's a really incredible way to maximize time, but also give your audience a different way to be, in, be able to engage with your organization. And I'll give you a very personal uh, personal example here that actually happened to me. Around five months ago or so, um, ACLU had actually sent me an email to take action on one of their advocacy forms on their website. Now, I don't know about you all, and I'm slightly ashamed to say this on this call, but I am really bad at reading my personal inbox. So I didn't even see the email be sent in. I have Gmail. You don't even want to know how many how many emails are in there. So I actually ended up missing it. However, ACLU a day later ended up sending a text that I received and I saw almost immediately that also referenced the email uh, that they had sent out uh, as well. And now had ACLU not tried to reach out to its supporters via a different channel, in this case, text messaging, I would have never seen or engaged with the action alert they had on their website. So right from the text, they had linked their website, the action alert, went in, clicked on it, and I was able to take action there. And that's just a real life example of why it's so important to be able to engage with your supporters in different avenues and different channels. Now, there's four main points for mobile messaging and why it's growing in popularity and effectiveness. First and foremost, Mobile messaging allows for a lot more of a personal connection with your audience. 
And so you can tailor the messages to those specific segments of your supporters and be able to address them by name or be able to refer to their previous interactions with the organization. And we know that that personalized approach increases that likelihood of engagement. Uh, if you've ever received an email that says, hey, friend, hey, buddy, hey, supporter, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It just feels too impersonal. So mobile messaging allows you to be able to make it that more of that personal connection there. Now, unlike emails, which can get lost in crowded inboxes, me being example A, text messages are delivered directly to that user's phone, which makes it a direct and in a immediate line of communication. And as we know, that is incredibly valuable for time-sensitive campaigns or updates to the organization. Now with this, the second point here is that it also comes with higher engagement rates. And for the analytical folks on this call, I have put in some, some uh, percentages for you. And if we actually break it down by numbers, SMS, aka mobile messaging, does have a 90 to a 98% open rate with most of the reads being within the first minutes of the receipt, meaning it's opened right as folks receive that text message. This is a lot higher average uh, open rate than emails, which sits around 20 to 30% of being opened. Now, additionally, response rates for SMS can be as high as 45% compared to just 6% for emails, which means mobile messaging allows for organizations to send quick, actionable items and content such as link to petitions, donation pages, event signups, or in ACL use case, a way to be able to take action on their advocacy forms. And because these actions are really simple to complete on a mobile message or, excuse me, mobile device, supporters are going to be more likely to follow through with them immediately. The third thing we can see here is that it's actually really cost effective. And if we compare it to some of the more traditional engagement, for example, direct mail or even some of that digital advertising, mobile messaging is less costly than other forms of uh, its engagement counterparts, which is going to make it a really cost effective way to reach that large audience. And this also goes particularly for those smaller nonprofits with those limited budgets. And if we think about it, we don't have to build anything out. There's no app development. There's no need to hire a developer, nothing like that, because mobile messaging is already widely being used by the public, which means your organization doesn't need to invest in reinventing the wheel to create that new technology. And then lastly, we can see here that it is incredibly versatile. Mobile messaging can be used for a variety of things. So if we think about different ways we can use this, we can use it to remind supporters about upcoming events or even volunteer opportunities, which is going to help increase those attendance conversion rates. It can also be used to help drive your donations by sending out an alert when a campaign is really close to reaching its goal. And this is just gonna help that create, create a sense of urgency for supporters to contribute to the organization as well as the organization's goals. Now, a third example here is that we can even use it to gather feedback or run surveys to help us understand how our supporters feel about different things, uh, maybe different things going on in the organization, or to help better tailor their experiences to their needs. Uh, and for example, I've received multiple follow-ups via text message uh, for events that I've attended, galas that I've attended, and they'll ask, the organization will ask, what do you think we could have done better or how could we increase our chances of you showing up to the next event? And I will actually respond with that. One of them was, I just need a more comfy chair. I have a bad back. Please someone provide me with a little bit more of a comfy chair and I'll be at that next event there. Now, I hope I've gotten you at least a little bit intrigued in mobile messaging. Otherwise, um, let me know and I'll, I'll just jump right off this call here. Uh, so. Maybe actually don't let me know that. I'll be a little bit sad to hear that. Um, but I did want to show you some additional analytics behind what it is uh, I'm speaking about. So right here, we can see some data gathered from Bonterra's clients during the Giving Tuesday year 2023. And if you were on last month's webinar, you may recall these numbers that Ben Miller had shared. 
And so if we think about mobile messaging and emails, when are people actually likely to engage with what it is we're sending them? This is something that really anytime you're engaging with your supporters, you should be thinking about when are people most likely to engage with us? When are they opening up our engagements so that we can really maximize our outreach? And as you know, working at a nonprofit, you're wearing 5 million different hats. Maximize the use of your time as well. So let's actually first dig in into email engagement here. First off, we can see that there were 127 million emails, and that's a huge number. Now, if you notice, the sweet spot for sending these emails was around 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If we actually think about this here, why do we think that that's that time? Well, let's think about it on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, we're sitting here right now, we're on this webinar, you might actually have your Outlook or your calendar pulled up. Most people are at their desks, they're working, and you're probably trying to clear out some emails uh, from your inbox. If you are and you're listening to this webinar, I'm calling you out a little bit. Uh, but if you are sitting here, you're probably having your Outlook pulled up or your Gmail pulled up and you're clearing out your inbox. You're in the zone, you've got your email open. So if a message or an email lands in your inbox around this time, it's got a really, really good shot of being opened and potentially responded to. But just as a pro tip, as a quick heads up here, keep in mind that everybody else is doing the same. So if you do want your emails to be open, if you do want them to be engaged with, make sure your subject line really grabs their attention. Now, on the other hand, let's talk about SMS mobile messaging for just a moment. We can see here that 336,000 texts went out on Giving Tuesday, and the most popular times to send them were between 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And same thing here. Why is it 6 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Well, a lot of times folks are off work, they're at home, and if you're not off work, you should probably ask why you're still working at 6 p.m., and a lot of times you're hanging out at home with your phone in your hand. So this is a really great prime time to send a text, punchy, quick, direct to their phone where they're actually going to see it and hopefully take action on that. The biggest takeaway here is that understanding that these timing trends is crucial. Anytime you're sending out engagements, it's crucial to understand when your supporters are most likely to engage. And when you know when they're most likely to check their emails or their phones, you can at that point plan your outreach accordingly, as well as boost the chances that your messages are going to hit home. Plus, the other thing to keep in mind here is that a lot of people are in, are in different head spaces. During work hours, a more professional tone might work better in emails. And then while in the evening, we need to change it up a little bit and a brief and direct SMS message is the way to go there. So remember, it's not just about when you send your messages, it's about teaching your audience when they're most open to hearing from you by thinking about what your supporters are doing at different times of the day so that you can really tailor your approach and really make that outreach count. Now, if this isn't enough data for you, uh, let's dig into how mobile messaging has grown using some numbers as well. Now, what we can see here, the data from MNR's report shows us just how much mobile messaging has grown from 2023, or excuse me, 2022 to 2023. And we can see that the numbers are really striking. On average here, nonprofits sent 40% more mobile messages in 2023 than they did back in 2022. And that, as we can see, it's, it's a gigantic jump. And it tells us that something really important happened here. As your audience grows, so does the need to reach them where they are most engaged. A lot of times, that's on their phones. Mobile messaging is quickly becoming one of the most effective ways to be able to cut through that noise, as well as get your message directly into the hands of the supporters there. And then actually breaking it down by type here, we can see that fundraising and advocacy messages saw an even bigger increase. And we can see that 50% more messages set in 2023 compared in 2022. And this isn't just about sending more messages for the sake of sending them. No one wants to do that. 
It's about understanding that people are becoming more and more comfortable engaging with their nonprofits that they support via text. And really the other thing to think about, let's be real here, if people are checking their phones more, it does make perfect sense to meet them there, especially when you're trying to rally to support or be able to raise funds. And to give you an idea of what this actually looks like in practice, here we can see that the medium number, median number of mobile fundraising appeals sent per subscriber over the year was about a 7.7. On top of that, there was about four advocacy messages sent per subscriber. And this just goes to show that nonprofits are finding a rhythm. Your organizations are finding a rhythm, keeping supporters engaged without also overwhelming them. Now you're probably like, okay, what does this actually have to do with me? The biggest thing that I want you to remember here is that if you're not already ramping up your mobile messaging game, now is the time to start. People are becoming more and more connected to their phones and more than ever connected to their phones. And this data here shows that a lot of nonprofits are catching on to that, whether it's for fundraising, advocacy, event promotion, Mobile messaging, SMS, is the becoming go-to strategy to keeping supporters informed as well as engaged. And really the bottom line here is it's not just a trend. SMS, texting, it's not just a trend. It really is a powerful tool that is here to stay. And as your audience grows, your mobile messaging strategy needs to grow with it. And if any of these numbers I've showed so far are an indication those who are leveraging this channel are already seeing those benefits. So what we're looking at here is a really clear picture of how mobile messaging stacks up against email in terms of fundraising and engagement. And I get it. I had been a diehard email fan. I was the one who was constantly sending out emails. So I get it if, my, if it might be a little bit uncomfortable to bring in mobile messaging into the game, but I just wanna show you some of the bigger differences here. First off, I want you to look at the numbers. There was $92 raised for every 1,000 fundraising, fundraising messages that were sent via mobile, AKA text, compared to the $76 pay, uh, raised per 1,000 fundraising emails. And that, if we put it into percentages, that is a 21% boost in funds uh, raised through mobile messaging. And it's clear that when it comes to direct action-oriented appeals, mobile messaging is really punching above its weight here. Now, here's something I want you to keep in mind, something really, really important. Nonprofits typically have about 158 mobile subscribers for every 1,000 email subscribers. So if we think about it, mobile messaging is already showing some really, really strong results. And while the volume is smaller compared to email, this suggests that if you were to grow your mobile subscriber base, the potential for impact could be even greater. Going down just a little bit here, when we look at revenue, only 0.37% of online revenue was directly attributed to mobile messaging, while email brought in 16%. And now you're probably like, ha, told you, email is the way to go. But I want you to actually take a look at this and put it into proportion here. Mobile messaging hasn't been around for a while. We're just now starting to use it, right? But email has been around for a little bit. So while you might think, hey, this is a small slice of the pie. Why am I even on this webinar? Give me a chance. I promise it'll make sense at the end here. But I do, again, want to emphasize that it is an emerging channel with a ton of untapped potential. While mobile usage is on the rise, it's likely to change as more nonprofits really start to leverage SMS and texting. Now, finally, down at the bottom here, we can see that 52% of web traffic came from mobile devices, uh, and this slightly edges out the desktop traffic at 48%. This just tells us that our supporters are already on their phones, they're engaging with our content, and that the opportunity is there. We just need to be able to seize it and be able to integrate our mobile messaging more deeply within our engagement strategies. 
the biggest thing that I can tell you and the biggest takeaway from what I just said here is, again, mobile messaging isn't just an add-on to your strategy. It's a powerful tool that's proving its worth in gold. Yes, it's still growing. Yes, the revenue numbers might be smaller right now, but the engagement and the fundraising potential is just untapped and it's undeniable here. As we continue to, uh, as mobile usage continues to climb, as more people tend to use it, those who are already ahead of the curve and start building their mobile strategies are now just going to be able to see those biggest returns. So let's not think of mobile as just a supplement to email, but as a channel to uh, with its own unique strengths. Your supporters are already there. They're ready to engage. It's just a matter of taking that step to meet them where they're at, on their phones. So now I've been the one to do a lot of the talking. I want to hear from you all here. I mentioned earlier that we would dig in into why some of you have potentially not used mobile messaging. But again, I'd like to hear from you all um, and maybe from two to three folks here. Why is it that you potentially have not used mobile messaging? So I'm going to give us a little bit of time here and I'd love to hear in the chat your responses. Again, why is it that you potentially have not used mobile messaging? A lot of times I'll hear it's because they don't have access to mobile messaging. They didn't realize it was a an option to engagement strategies or a loss. Also, I hear a lot of times it's just, you know, they just don't know how to use it. So I'm going to, again, pause here for a moment, type in into the chat why you potentially have not used mobile messaging. Not sure if you can see the chat, Sophie, but we just had um, someone chime in that they haven't found a program that integrates with their CRM. So um, they are really interested in starting mobile messaging, but it just doesn't integrate. Yeah, yeah uh, and that another makes one, no CRM. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Um, a lot of times, I also hear that some organizations aren't tech savvy. And what I would say is as you are looking for a CRM, as you're looking for a potential tool, always ask and see if there's a training available. And that should always be available to you as you're looking for CRMs, um, as you're looking for new tools. Training should always be available and a part of the tool. So definitely recommend uh, asking for that. If they don't have it, a lot of times they do have uh, either help videos or written documentation as to how to use things. But um, that's also sometimes something I hear. And I actually, actually, I can see the chat here and uh, Latanya actually put in a really, really good point here, the time needed to create the process. And Latanya totally understand because a lot of times I mentioned earlier, you're wearing you know, 5 million different hats and you're trying to keep track of everything there. The one thing that I wanna point out really quickly with that is, Yes, it's going to take a little bit of time to set it up in the beginning, but I also want you to potentially think of just how much return on investment it would have down the line, six months down the line, a year down the line. Instead of you having to sit there sending out emails to every single person, waiting until they respond maybe a day later, two days later, you can get that almost instantaneously via text message. And on top of that, say you're running a fundraising campaign, you're reaching out to folks, you you might see maybe not as much return on investment, or you're taking too much time to set it up via social media or via other different engagement methods. Text might become the go-to way to do that because now you might see a lot bigger return on investment that way, a lot more donations that way. So again, yes, while it might take time to set it up in the beginning, you never know just how impactful it is until you actually do it. Uh, yeah, so someone here said, we don't have people's phone numbers and must figure out a way to collect mass, uh, or excuse me, uh, a way to collect those mass phone numbers. Don't worry about that. We're going to go over that as well. Thank you all so much. This is actually really, really helpful here, uh, mainly because as we go through a lot of these questions, a lot of these engagement points that, that you all put in here, they're going to be addressed. How to get people to engage, how to actually begin integrating it, et cetera. Um, and you're always welcome to reach out to me if you have any questions, and uh, I'm more than happy to answer those for you. How do we get the board engaged? How do we actually do this? Where do we start?
definitely here to help out. So with that being said, mobile messaging isn't just the only form of engagement. There's some that you might have heard of uh, or might not have, but maybe you've explored some of them, just not in their full potential. And as we know, staying connected with your supporters is crucial. And sometimes that means stepping outside of our comfort zones to try new methods, whether you're looking to reach younger audiences, engage more personally, or you're simply trying to freshen up your communication strategy, there's really something here for everyone. And it's really important to understand that these channels are not meant to be a standalone. The real power comes from integrating them into what's called an omni-channel approach, where each channel complements the others to create a seamless and consistent experience for your supporters. This isn't just about choosing one method over another. So just because we're talking about texting doesn't mean I want you to go here, uh, out of here, and just begin to text everyone and forget about email. This means using them all in tandem. And so with that, we've touched on this already. And I think at this point, you're probably going to roll your eyes if I say this again, but I'm going to I'm gonna say it again. Um, it's really, really worth emphasizing. Mobile messaging isn't about just sending a text here and there. With SMS, it can create a more direct, personal, and, uh, and more memorable experience with your supporters. For example, I want you to think about sending out a personalized thank you message, event reminders, or even impact updates right to someone's phone. The convenience and how immediate it is, it's going to make it a really powerful tool in your communication tool toolkit. Another thing I want to bring up here, and a lot of times when I bring this up, organizations are like, oh my gosh, we can do that all day, every day, which is that video content. Video content is incredibly engaging and can make your messages more personal and impactful. And I'm talking about that video SMS, that video text, whether it's a quick thank you video from your team, a behind the scenes look at your work, or even a testimonial from someone you've been able to help out. Videos can be really easily shared across different platforms. I mentioned text, we can do it via email, social media, and this is gonna really help maximize their reach and their impact. Another way to do this is stories on your Instagram, Facebook, and even LinkedIn. It's a really great way, great way to share those timely updates event highlights, and even quick messages in a format that's really easy to consume. Now, stories in of itself, when we're thinking about social media, typically they're brief, they're visually engaging, and it can be a really fun way to connect with your audience in real time. And the other way to think about it is that they really create a sense of urgency. People know a lot of times when they're on social media, they see a story, a lot of times they know that stories are only available for 24 hours, so they're a lot more likely to engage right away. The other thing I want to point out, and this one's a little bit more unique, it's emerging. Podcasts are on the rise here, and they offer a really unique opportunity to connect with your supporters in a little bit more of an intimate setting. This could be whether you're sharing stories from the field, you're interviewing experts, or you're discussing your latest campaigns. Podcasts will allow you to engage with your audience during their downtime. And if we think about downtime, a lot of times that could be when we're commuting, commuting back and forth from work. It could be, uh, say, you're working out or you're even just relaxing at home. It's a great way to pop the podcast on, stream it, listen to it while even you're cleaning. I tend to do that a lot. I, I don't know about you all. I hate washing dishes and vacuuming put the podcast on. It's a great way to engage and not get absolutely bored out of my mind and stop my tours halfway through. Now, if producing a full podcast sounds daunting, the thing that I would say here is consider shorter audio clips or even small interviews that can be shared on your website or through social media. Biggest thing here is engagement is key. And one way to boost that is through interactive content. Now, we've gone through a few interactive content here right on our webinar, and I want you to remember the polls that you just engaged with, the chat that you just engaged with. Instead of listening to me drone on and on for 
45 minutes here, I want to be able to engage with you and get an idea of where it is I can meet you at and your thoughts, your questions here. And I want you to try and do that with your supporters as well, because it helps provide that valuable feedback as well as those insights. For example, someone had put, hey, I don't know where to start. Right. We're going to show you where to start. That's what we want to do with those supporters. Uh, and another way we can do this, again, you could do it through a poll, through an email. Uh, you could do it through a quiz. You could do it through a survey. Any which way in where you can get your audience to be able to engage with the organization, where they're actually clicking around or they're responding. Now, there's not a one-size-fits-all when it comes to communications. We all know that. What works for one organization or even going down a, a smaller level, deeper level here, maybe even for one campaign, may not work for another. The idea is to be open to exploring these new channels, testing them out, and seeing what resonates best with your audience. By helping diversifying in the way we connect, we not only keep our communications fresh, but we also ensure that we're reaching supporters in ways that are meaningful to them. And this is really where that omni-channel approach becomes key. So with that being said, let's talk about omni-channel. Omni-channel is not just about using multiple platforms. To say we take, um, we talked a little bit about this, say we take a poll, we throw on our website, we throw it through a, a email, a text message, maybe on social media, and then hoping to see what sticks. That's not what it's about. Each channel in that omni-channel approach has its own strengths. And by understanding these, we can reach our supporters more effectively. And really, here's why that matters. 72% of supporters now prefer that omni-channel, that multi-channel engagement. Take me, for example, uh, ACL, you had reached out to me via email, which I typically don't respond to, whereas I'm very quick on, on text. Uh, don't don't let my manager know that. I'll keep my phone away during work hours, I promise. Um, but your supporters, they don't want to be confined to just one way of communicating. They're looking for consistency across the board, whether it's through emails, text, social media, or even that direct mail. By, again, meeting them where they're at, we're not just engaging with them, but we're respecting their preferences. Now, I want to actually break this down here. For each one of these channels, when are they used best? Why are they used best for that specific engagement method? For email here, email is really perfect when you need to do a deep dive into things. And if we think about it, that could be a newsletter, maybe a detailed update or an annual report. Email gives you the space to tell your sto story in full detail. And then if we think about it, with email, we can segment our list and tailor our messages to specific groups of donors, making sure what we send out is relevant and engaging. For example, I love doing advocacy work. I love doing organizational work. And I love it being centered around immigrant rights. And so if an organization knows that and they are, say, sending out an action alert around immigrant rights, they right off the bat know, hey, Sophie's engaged with immigrant rights. Let's send out her, let's send her an email surrounding that. She's more likely to engage. And if you were to ask me, would you engage with it? Absolutely. So we need to be able to understand and segment those lists of donors and supporters into what their interest areas are. Now, texting, on the other hand, it's all about that immediacy, the immediate respond there. It's direct, it's personal, and the open rates are, as we saw, they're off the charts here, which is going to make it the really ideal way to be able to engage for those urgent appeals, maybe those last minute event reminders, or really just some quick updates. Imagine sending a text with a donation link right after the event. This is when emotions are high. They, they are really uh, engaged with the organization. They love the event. Why not ask them immediately after the event to donate to the organization when they're most likely to give? If we take a look at social media, this is really where we can create that buzz. It's a place for quick updates, engaging videos, and real-time stories that resonate. 
Plus with those targeted ads, we can reach potential new supporters who care about the same things we do. And folks who are engaged with the organization, they follow us on social media, they can then share that out to their networks. Thought process being is we're friends with people who like the same things as us, do the same things as us. So there's a lot bigger chance there to be able to share your, your story as well as your impact. And then even in the digital world, when we think about direct mail, this still absolutely packs a punch, especially for those older donors. It's something physical they can hold, a tangible connection to your cause. And say we want to make it a little bit more immediate, we can even add a QR code there, making it easy for them to jump from offline to online, like donating directly from their phone. Lastly, we have events and auctions. Whether it's in-person or virtual, we're all about building those relationships. And we can use those other channels like texting and email to be able to keep that conversation going before, during, and after the event. For example, here, uh, we could follow up with an email full of event highlights, and then we could also send a video recap via text message as well as via email uh, to let them know, hey, this is how the event went, here's everything we covered, as well as be able to send out a last minute detail via text. Now, how do we actually weave these channels into our current strategies and to each other without reinventing that wheel? Again, we don't want to have to create an app. We don't want to have to develop our own thing. Let's just use what we already have, but let's see how we can use them in tandem. First and foremost, videos. Videos are incredibly powerful and we can use them across multiple channels. We've spoken about that a little bit, but I want you to imagine creating a short video message with your organization's leader uh, or people who are a beneficiary. We can embed it into an email or send a link via text. Being able to drive traffic to our website or say our YouTube channel where our podcasts are uploaded to. Another example is QR codes. We spoke about that a little bit. It is an incredibly simple, but a really, really effective tool. Adding one to our direct mail pieces, event flyers, or even in-person events is going to allow supporters quick access to donation pages, say signup forms, or even extra content on their phones. And it's all about making things as easy as possible to be able to engage. Engaging our audience with interactive content. We spoke about that a little bit. This is another really great tactic. Moving on here, we've got personalization. And 53% of Gen Z and millennial donors say they would donate at least 25% or more for that personalized experience, which is why it's so important we use our CRM to create those personal donor journeys that incorporate multiple channels. For example, after someone donates online, we could follow up with a personalized thank you email, and then we can also send a text updating them on how their donation was able to make an impact. Another example, say we're running a fundraising campaign. We want to make sure we're promoting it across all of our platforms. We can start with an email to introduce the campaign. We can then use social media in tandem to share progress and updates. We can send those text reminders and then reach out via direct mail to those key supporters. By keeping our message consistent but tailored to each channel, we can maintain momentum as well as keep our call to action front and center. So we've talked about mobile messaging as one additional way to engage your audience, but I really would love to dig into uh, if you've considered using video messaging or if you've ever used mobile or excuse me, video messaging. Um, and I'd love to hear from you all in the poll here. Have you used mobile video messaging? Have you not used video messaging? I'll give us about 30 seconds here. And then Ashley, if you don't mind sharing those results. Yeah, again, as it's kind of trickling in, this one's pretty split 50-50 actually. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, half of people are saying yes. Half, it's almost like exactly 50-50. <laughs> okay, perfect. Well, the ones who have, you can just jump in and take over this webinar. Uh, I'll go grab some food <laughs> and some, some drinks there. Um, right. But really, I'd <laughs> love to talk through the video messaging a little bit more for folks who maybe haven't used it 
or they haven't used it to its full potential. And moving here, um, what I want you to think about here is when you hear someone mention Google, what's that first thing that pops into your mind? Kind of two things are probably going to pop into your mind. You're going to see that really big, colorful G, or you're going to envision that Google down at the bottom of the search page with like 300 pages to go through, either one of those two. But if I ask you to recall Google's slogan, do the right thing, it might not be as easy to remember. You'd be like, Google has a slogan? I didn't even know that. It sure does. It's do the right thing. This here illustrates a key point. Visuals stick with us in a way that text often doesn't. And video messaging really excels in this area. Research shows that people remember visual content like logos and videos about 95% better than they remember text. And if we compare that to a mere 10% retention rate for text, you can see why video is such an incredibly powerful tool as well. Because the idea is, is it's not just about brand recall. Video also creates an emotional connection to your audience. When supporters see someone from your organization speaking directly to them, it's going to make it feel more personal. They're not just reading about your cause, they're seeing it, they're feeling it, and they're connecting with the faces and the stories behind it. This emotional engagement, it's critical. We need to be able to have that emotional investment from our supporters. Because when people feel connected, they're more likely to support your cause, whether that's through donations, volunteering, or simply spreading the word. And I always like to joke when I'm working with my clients, I'm like, it's amazing that you've got the, uh, you've got volunteers. And then the next question I almost always ask is, have you gotten those volunteers to potentially become donors as well? And they're like, well, no, not really. I'm like, why not? They've got skin in the game. They're visually seeing how they're making an impact to the organization. And a lot of times they're more willing to give because of it. Now, another thing to think of when we're talking about video messaging, video uh, minimizes, video messages minimizes understand, misunderstandings and it maximizes clarity. It's a lot easier to convey tone, emotion, and intent through video than through some of the text alone. And this also makes your message not only more impactful, but also a lot more immediate, just like that mobile messaging. So as we think about how to diversify and strengthen our communication strategies, Video messaging should also definitely be on that list. It's a tool that can really take your engagement to that next level by making your organization's message more memorable, personal, and clear. Now, there were a few things as we had pulled up uh, the, the chat, a few people were asking, how do we actually start with SMS? How do we actually start with, uh, with video messaging? Let's actually talk about that right now. But just as we talked about, again, it's one of those tools that can really take your communication to the next level. So let's think about a few situations where video can really work wonders. I want you to imagine you're running a fundraising campaign. Instead of just sending out an email, what if you recorded a quick video? You can share the urgency of your cause, show exactly where the donations will go, and really make that emotional connection. When people see faces and hear the voices of those who are helping, it makes that need so much more real and they're more likely to respond. So for example, after we get off this webinar, I don't expect you to remember my name and I'm, I'm totally fine with that. But say you're referencing the webinar a month, two months down the road, you're gonna be like, it was that one, one person mentioned they're an immigrant, she looks like this, et cetera. And then Ashley at that point would probably be like, yep, that's Sophie right there. So I just want you to remember, it's that recall, that visual recall. Now to actually get started with mobile messaging, um, this is a really great way to check with your current. The way you want to do this is check the current channels that you're using right now for your engagement, and then see if mobile messaging would be a good part of that. For personal fundraising, use SMS or messaging uh, to be able to send quick personalized updates with those donation requests right to the supporter's phone. This is going to make it easier for them to also get involved. When we're working with partners, mobile messaging can also help keep everyone on the same page um, in 
to be able to make those joint campaigns more effective with those instant updates. The other thing that I'm going to say here is that make sure your team knows how to use these tools. Again, I mentioned this a little bit earlier by offering training or by utilizing training tools. And I want you to start off with small test campaigns. I don't expect you to get off this call and be like, all right, I'm going to go message everyone, their cats, their dogs, all of that. I'm not, I don't expect you to do any of that. What I do ask of you is use it with a small segment. See if the ROI is there. See if you're getting those responses. And if you are, consider adding that to your engagement strategy. When you first start using mobile messaging, there's a few things that I definitely want to make sure we cover. And I cannot stress this enough. Start with clean donor data. Make sure the data in your platform is clean. It's up to date and it's free of duplicates. Um, I have unfortunately run into this where I have been triple texted. I was in someone's database three times. I was triple texted back to back to back. And so it's not fun accidentally triple texting, um, uh, triple texting your supporters. So make sure you clean up that data. Steps two and three will typically happen simultaneously. You're going to make sure that your supporters are uh, are actually opting in into those texts. And someone had asked on the chat here that we're not really sure how to get those folks to opt in. The way you want to go about doing that is on any kind of front-facing form or any way you're engaging with folks, ask for that opt-in. So on your donation forms, ask for an opt-in. On your newsletters, ask them to opt-in. Um, this could be also through say your social media, ask for folks to be able to opt in. If, you've, if you're sending out engagement via pigeon carrier, ask them to opt in. Any which way you can get them to, uh, to be able to opt in into those messages, do so. That's gonna be your first step. Typically, I see a lot of times your first step here for first opt-in typically will be on your donation pages and or front-facing forms like event signups, volunteer signups, or even general signups as well. From there, you're going to then begin creating and segmenting your list of those who have opted in into mobile messaging and then have it ready to go. And then lastly, you'll utilize templates either given to you from your CRM or create your own library of templates to be able to use. And a, a pro tip here, if you are already using text messaging, see if your text messaging tool has A-B testing to see which text message is more likely to gain more traction. Now that we've covered why segmenting your donor list is important, I want to talk about effectively engaging those segments through mobile messaging. So first and foremost, keep it short, keep it sweet. People do not want to receive a giant paragraph in a text message. That's not what it's there for. Make it direct and to the point. Second, personalize your messages as well. No one likes to feel like they're just another number on a list. Again, whenever I I will also admit something to you all here. I tend to shop a lot and I tend to receive a lot of text messages saying, hey, buyer, thank you for this. I'm like, ah, this is not a good look. So personalize those text messages. Use those merge fields. A simple touch like this can make your messages feel more personal and engaging. And then make sure you're using a call to action as well. Every message should have something at the end of it that gets that supporter to take action. And then lastly, remember, timing is everything. Think about when your audience is most likely to see and respond to your messages. We covered that a little bit earlier. And so, for example, sending a text at night and then an email in the morning. Now, another thing that I want to go through here is when text messaging can really make a difference. And so, for example, here, we could say for, uh, for a marathon. Say we have a marathon fundraiser this weekend. A simple text like, please click this link to donate to our marathon this weekend. All proceeds will support the runners for gear water can go a really, really long way. It's direct. It's quick. It tells them exactly what they need to do. And the other thing with text messages is don't be afraid to, to get creative. If you want to send gifts, some people call it GIFs. If you call it GIFs, we can't be friends. But... You can also do that as well. You can send images, videos, be creative in the way you're reaching out to them. The key is to try different approaches and then see what resonates.
And to give you a really great example of this was when Sandy Hook Promise, which is a Bonterra client, used the Bonterra tool set, including mobile messaging, to run a rapid response campaign that was urging its Senate to reduce gun violence. Um, and just to get into a little bit more detail here, on May 24th, 2022, a mass shooting had erupted in Uvalde, Texas, and Sandy Hook Promise was able to rallied supporters around passing legislation to prevent the risk of another similar incident occurring. Um, and they were able to do that via those subject lines I had talked about, that A-B testing. Now, because of that, they were able to send out 289,000 messages, which in turn, uh, they actually passed the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. And I'm not going to get too deep into this, but I will have Ashley send out the link to this case study if you want to read into it a little bit more. I'll have Ashley send it out after this webinar is done. Now, in the last few minutes that we have here, I do want to make sure we review some tips for automating your communications to also help save more time. First, what we want to do is choose an action. When you're using an automation tool, you want to have what's called a trigger point. What you want to do here is determine what that trigger point is. Maybe it's someone donating for the first time that kicks off the automation. Maybe it's someone who signed up for an event. And that automation tool will walk them through a decision tree that if they do this, if the supporter does this, system will automatically do that. If I donate for the first time, system will automatically send me, send me an email saying, thank you for your donation. Would you consider opting it into our task text? If they opted, they receive an automatic text message with maybe that, what do we call it again? A GIF or a GIF. Now, from here, we also want to map the journey out. So we don't want to just say, hey, from here, we're going to send out a text message. Then we're going to do this. Then we're going to do that. Use your conversion rates that are available in your CRMs, your automation tools. Um, and if you don't have those conversion rates, definitely ask to, to see if you do and get an understanding of where people are engaging. If you notice people are engaging more 75% through text than email, change up your automation to where email is sent first. And then lastly, check in. Don't just set it and forget it. Make a habit of checking in on your automations pretty regularly. Again, look at those metrics, see what's working, see, see what's not working. The best part about this is you get to be creative and you get to see what people are engaging with. So change it around as needed. From here, tip number two, we talked about this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit home again, clean that data, regularly run those deduplication checks and update your supporter information. And um, I will say tools like Bonterra here can really help with integrating those be best practices from the field. And the way to think about it is Duplicates and outdated data can really mess with your engagement strategies, which is going to make it harder to connect with your audience efficiently. Lastly, segment your donor list. I talked about an example for me here. Segmenting that list is really going to help you understand who you should be reaching out to. And so if we say we want to reach out to everyone regarding or we want to reach out to our event attendees for 2023 gala, we're not going to do a text blast to everyone in our list because it just wouldn't make sense and it wouldn't seem personable. So we can go in, segment our list and say, I want to see anyone who attended the 23, 2023 gala and send them out a text message. Definitely recommend, again, segmenting that list so that you're not just blasting everyone with every single piece of information. It's going to overwhelm them a little bit. Now, from here... I do want to just emphasize every nonprofit is unique. Every one of you is unique. Your segmentation strategy should reflect your organization's specific needs. Maybe you're a newer nonprofit focused on growing your base of regular donors, or maybe you're an established group that needs to prioritize, say, advocacy involvement. The key here is to keep adapting your engagement strategies, your segmentation, so that your communications stay fresh and relevant. So what are some key takeaways here? I've had you now uh, on this call for 57 minutes. Let's talk about some, some last steps. First and foremost, use that omni-channel approach. It's gonna help you understand how and in what ways your supporters like to engage. I said this twice, I am gonna say it a third time. Data cleanup is crucial. 
go in, make sure that supporter's information is up to date. Make sure there's no, du uh, du uh, no duplications in your CRM. Don't be shy to use different engagement methods. One engagement method might not work and another one might. And I understand that it might be a little bit more work in the beginning, but I want you to think about a year from now, two years from now, and being able to understand how your supporters' minds work. Last thing here, this call is about mobile messaging. So consider trying it out. If you're not already doing it, consider trying it out. You might actually surprise yourself and actually end up loving it more than you thought you would. From here, I'd really love to open up the floor to some Q&A, and I'd love to hear, based off of what I just went through, um, I'd love to hear if this is something that you envision being able to integrate into your communication. So, Ashley, if you don't mind pulling up another poll here uh, and just asking, is based off of what I've said, is this something that you would, mobile messaging, something you would incorporate, or maybe not? If the numbers end up going down a little bit, I might just cry and end <laughs> this webinar a little bit earlier. <laughs> no, the numbers are up. The numbers are up. Awesome. awesome. Okay, I did my job. That's great. Yes, That's great. You did, Sophie. This is great. I feel awesome. ready to tackle. <laughs> I'm Honestly, glad to I hear feel that. Ready. This was oh, fantastic, okay. folks. While um, folks are filling that in, I know we have a couple minutes left here, so I don't think we'll be able to get through every question, but wanted to at least tackle maybe one or two. Yeah. Um, and the first question, one of the mm -hmm. first questions that we received earlier this afternoon um, was about maybe some research or some information regarding mobile messaging with like videos or I'm sorry, photos or graphics. If there yeah. is any intel you have on that, what that looks yeah. like, if that works, doesn't work, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So after the call here, we can send out some information as to what that looks like, some numbers. Um, I was not lying on this call. None of these numbers I made up. I am not that smart. So I'll send over some additional uh, information on that. Awesome. Perfect. And then another question um, that we got was regarding maybe some of the um, data that you showed earlier, which we can, of course, follow up after, um, but regarding some of the best times to send, um, was that referring to time set or best, like the best times for emails to be opened? Not sure Ooh, if they were like used interchangeably. Yeah. Yeah, so that's actually when times uh, when the emails are to uh, to be open. So, for example, I could set up my um, say I send out an email, I could send it and have it be scheduled to actually be sent at that 11 o'clock time. So if we send it at 11 o'clock, there might not be a chance they may not actually open it until a certain time. So we want it to be open right at that 11 o'clock or that 11 to that that 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that refers to open rates. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Sophie. Yeah, we got that question earlier and I wanted to make sure that we addressed yeah, that Yeah, good one. question. Um, but folks, I know we're at time here. Um, we will do our best to follow up afterwards with our email with maybe answering some of these additional questions that we received. Um, but I want to thank you, Sophie, again, for your time this afternoon. This was such a great presentation. Okay. Again, I feel ready for mobile messaging. I'm <laughs> sure everyone on the call does as well. Um, and thank you guys for joining us this afternoon. Thanks for your engagement with Sophie yes, in the chat and the Q&A. It always makes for a fun session. It always makes for a great session and we definitely appreciate it. So yeah, um, y'all didn't that, make me feel alone. I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you so much for your time here. Awesome. Thank you all. And we hope to see you at our next session and be on the lookout for our follow-up email after today's session. So thank you all so, so thank much. Thank you all so you much for your time have here. Rest of the day or afternoon. <laughs> thank Bye, you all everyone. so much. Bye-bye.